Throughout most of the 20th century, astronomers were aware of eight planets orbiting our solar system. We had Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, the rocky planets in our solar system. We had Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, the gas giants in our solar system. But starting in the 1990s, astronomers began finding planets orbiting stars other than the Sun. Um, the first one found in 1995 was orbiting a star called 51 Pegasi, a star fairly close to our star. Uh, but since that time, astronomers have found hundreds and even thousands of star or thousands of planets orbiting stars outside of our solar system. Now, they use different techniques to find these star, find these planets, and each of these techniques has strengths and weaknesses. So it's useful to understand the the main techniques or the most abundant techniques for finding planets, and what sort of information they give, and what they what potential they have to give us information in the future. And so I'd like to go through four of those main techniques. Now, this star found around 51 or planet found around 51 Pegasi was found using the radial velocity or the wobble technique, and how that technique works is it looks for the motion of the star as the planet orbit, orbits about the star. So we tend to think, you know, if, if we confine ourselves to our solar system, say Jupiter going around the, the sun, we tend to think of the sun being stationary and Jupiter just orbits around it. Well, the reality is they both orbit around a common center of mass. And because the sun is so much larger, it moves very little. Jupiter is much smaller and it moves a lot, but nonetheless, both objects move. And if we were to take a telescope outside our solar system, point it at the sun, we would be able to, with sufficient, if the telescope had sufficient sensitivity, we would be able to detect this motion of the sun due to Jupiter orbiting around it. And by analyzing that motion over a sufficiently long range of time, we could, get, we could determine that there was a planet orbiting about. In fact, we could tell if there were multiple planets. Now, the, this technique, because it relies on the gravitational attraction of the planet to the star, obviously is going to be sensitive to planets that are more massive, because the more massive a planet is, the more gravity, gravitational tug it exerts on a star. It's going to be sensitive to planets that are closer into the star, because again, the gravitational pull between two objects is greater the closer they are, and they're going to be more sensitive to eccentric orbits. You know, Jupiter orbits more or less in a circle. Um, but as stars or planets that orbit where they get close to their star and further away, it's also going to be more sensitive to those kinds of stars because again, or those kinds of planets because it causes a greater influence on the star's motion. Now, using the radial velocity technique, and we found roughly 500 planets using this technique, this sort of technique, or this technique, gives us information about the mass of the planet, it gives us information about the orbit of the planet, but it doesn't give us a lot else. And as we see that ultimately one of the reasons for doing or looking for extrasolar planets is to answer the question, is there life somewhere else out there? We're going to have to get more kinds of information. Well, there's a different technique um, that allows us to see objects that are actually further away. Um, and this is, one of the main this is one of the four dominant techniques. And it turns out that as light passes by a large gravitational object, that light will actually be bent. And if, you can, if astronomers can watch a large number of stars occasionally, one of those more distant stars will have a star closer to it pass so that, they're all, so that we're lined up, so the more distant star, there's a closer star that's in between us and then, and then we get to us. And so we're all in a line. And when that happens, that middle star will actually lens the light from the more distant star. And as it does so, if there's planets around this closer star, those, those planets will also cause a lensing, which will give us, so this gives us the capacity to detect planets around these other stars. And while we haven't found a lot of planets this way, this has the potential to find planets that are much smaller than the radial velocity technique. In fact, it has already found some in that fashion. And what happens, or how this works, is that as 
light passes by a large object that has mass or a lot of gravitational influence, that gravitational mass can actually lens the light from a more distant object. So if you have a distant object, a closer star lined up with, our, with us, we can, that middle star can actually lens the more distant star. And if there happen to be planets around it, then the planets will also do some lensing. And what's neat about this technique is that it's sensitive to objects that are just a few times the mass of the Earth, and we can actually lo watch lots of stars. Now the problem is there's no room for any follow-up because it was just a chance occurrence. And also this technique gives us, again, the mass and the orbit, but little other information. Now, a, the, the technique that astronomers are really working to develop that we don't have uh, sufficient sensitivity yet, but is going to be the one that will give us lots of information about planets, is actually the direct detection. And that's where we look out, we're able to mask off the light from the star, see the light from the planet itself, and get information about how large the planet is, how bright it is, what kind of atmosphere it has, uh, the temperature, mass, orbit. We get just a, a wealth of information. The problem with this technique, or what's difficult about this technique, is that very often the light from the planet is anywhere from a million to a billion times dimmer than the light from the star. And so having a, it's kind of like trying to find a firefly up next to one of those big bright searchlights. It's just a very difficult technique. Um, and so, it, you know, it, it also, it makes it easier to find planets that are farther from the star, that are very bright, and that are also young. But nonetheless, as this technique develops and we're able to find or use this technique to observe solar or planet systems like our solar system, this will give us a great wealth of information and maybe even allow us to actually answer the question, is there life on a planet on which we're looking? As of right now, though, the most prolific technique is the transit technique. And this technique was implied by the Kepler satellite, a satellite launched, uh, operated for three years, trying to find Earth-like planets orbiting around sun-like stars. Earth takes one year to orbit, and to do the transit technique, you have to have about three transits, and so you have to look for three orbits. Um, it is a, it's a versatile technique because it allows a lot of detections and gives a, a pretty good amount of information, but you can't just say, I want to look at that star and see whether there are any, any planets because it requires the geometry to be lined up a certain way. If you were to be looking at our solar system or any planetary system, you have to be looking edge on because what you're looking to detect is the dimming of the star as the planet transits in front of the star. And what's neat about this technique is that as the planet transits in front of the star, um, it dims the light, and by how much it's dimmed, you can tell the actual dimension of the planet. So you get the physical size. And if you're able to couple this with some other technique, you can get the mass, you also get the orbit, and because you're actually seeing as the planet's moving into and out of the transit, it's possible to get information about the atmosphere and maybe even the temperature. And so this, has, this technique has the potential to give us quite a bit of information even before we develop the direct detection techniques to their full capabilities. Now the Kepler satellite, um, as of uh, you know, 2012, the start of 2012, had found more than 2,000 planetary candidates, and they expect 80 to 90 percent of those to be actual planets themselves. So somewhere between 1,600 to 2,000 planets are being found using the, uh, the transit technique by the Kepler satellite. So you know, they're, they're, these are four of the larger or the most prolific, the most useful ways of finding planets. Now astronomers have developed lots of ways of finding planets, but these are the ones that have the best hope of finding planets that are similar to, in size to Earth, at similar orbits uh, to the Sun relative to Earth, so where they're in a range where liquid water could potentially exist, and might have the capacity to look at the atmosphere and get information that will allow us to assess whether there's a possibility of life being there and potentially whether life actually exists on the planet. Now it's an open question whether God chose to create life on other places or whether this is the only place. And so it's important that we actually go out, find the number of planets, see how many are out there, see the diversity of planets that are out there, and actually understand what God the Creator has done to see what we can find out about him.